All right. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> if you are a Christian, happy Easter to you. If you are not a Christian, check it out. So if you a full-time worker at the CTA and you're in local 308 or local 241, uh, you may be working today and you're not getting a premium. Full-timers are, though. And the contract that we have that expired on December 31st, 2019, has no accommodations for part-timers to have any kind of premium for a holiday. None. And for a union, for a job that is a union job, that is a bargain for a job, uh, that is unacceptable. Some say, oh, well, I went through that. Well, I did too. I'm full-time now. But when I went through it, doesn't make it right. And that's what we have to understand, is that we cannot make excuses for our deficiencies. Whenever there's a deficiency, whenever there's a problem in society that affects the health of the people, and when you think of a job, you don't necessarily think it's health related, but it is because you spend a lot of your life doing the job. And so working conditions bargained for We have the workers contract This is a open source, public contract written uh, by, it is created by local 241, local 308 uh, members. And we take every, everybody's uh, proposal items and we distill them and we put them inside a new contract. And you can see it for yourself and you can participate in the project. And in it, we take Article 3.6 that governs or dictates what the working conditions are for part-time workers, part-time employees. And when it comes to holiday pay, all right. Uh, the contract reads in, in 3.6 uh, that part time employees shall not be eligible for paid leave or other fringe benefits applicable to full time uh, employees, except as specifically provided here, which isn't. So, in, in the workers' contract, we change that. We say the part-time employees will not be eligible for some paid leave or other fringe benefits applicable to full-time employees, except as specifically provided herein. Part-time employees will receive time and a half premium for pay on holidays worked. It's only fair. And what incentive does anyone have when they're working part-time to even show up if they don't have that time and a half? This is not unusual for part-time jobs. This is not strange. Why is it the local 308, local 241, we are always playing catch-up? Ketchup, not mustard, ketchup and mustard. I'm talking catching up to the non-bargained for world. For example, we have this issue with uh, fight for 15. So we're supposed to get 
all the uh, 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 part-time jobs up to 15 sometime this summer. But that's catching up with the law, right? That's catching up with something that people have already fought for. The unions are not organizations to follow, that, that follow other people. Union workers historically are the, are the trend setters. The unions are not supposed to follow the trend. They're supposed to set the trend. For what? For safety. For wages and working conditions. Prevailing wage is a union thing historically. Working conditions is established by unions, but now for the past 50 years that we have succumbed to the assaults by corporations and their servants and governments, we are now just falling behind. And people who aren't union workers are looking at this and saying, why should we be in a union? We're just paying money to somebody. They say, well, it's like you need a lawyer. You know, they'll, they'll help fight for you if you get in trouble. Why? Well, I don't get in trouble. And frankly, a lot of people, most coworkers are not getting in trouble every day where they need that. It's more than grievances, sisters and brothers. It is more than uh, having a lawyer. The, the unions are not lawyers. The lawyers really have one use for a union. And that is to keep the officers out of jail, especially the president. You have People thinking now we got to listen to the lawyers for everything. The lawyers are not the union. The unions are not lawyers. The sole purpose of the union is to take power from those with power and give it to those who have no power. And this was at the heart of the Farm Workers Union. I forgot the exact acronym. Um, Dolores uh, Huerta and Cesar Chavez in the, in, the, in the great boycott back in the, uh, the early 80s, I think it was, or the late 70s, the late 70s. That, that is the purpose of the union. It is not to be a lawyer. It is not to govern and, and discipline and control the workers. But that's what we've become. I see some, some comments here. Yes, the union theme song we, we did play. I, I'm sorry I didn't let you all know. That was uh, Shut Up, Be Happy. That's the uh, theme song because our brothers and sisters of Local 241 have not had union meetings coming on 13 months now. Local 308, we've been having them. It's kind of reckless. You know, we do them in person. Uh, in a in a stuffy room, it's ridiculous. Um, none of these leaders, so-called leaders, want to have virtual union meetings. They absolutely refuse. They come up with all kinds of excuses. Oh, the international ATU said such and such. Oh, shut up. Do you know what the international ATU cares about? President Dixon and President Hill. Do you know what they really care about? It's that per capita tax. You stop mailing that, shipping that 30 or 40, whatever we pay, then we're in trouble. We got locals doing virtual uh, charter member meetings, allowing the members to introduce motions and vote on grievances. There's ways to protect people's personal identifying information. There's so many services out there that could make us put our unions on a virtual, in a virtual world where we could even function without ever having to go inside a building. It's good to do that, but you know, it's the year 2021. Y'all act like it's the year 1971. <laughs> 
So no part-time paid vacation either. That's right. They give you unpaid time off. So if you're a part-timer, oh, you got two weeks of uh, vacation. You get a week for your first year, and then all the years after that, you get up to two weeks. But it's unpaid. <laughs> but it's good to know that because, hey, you know, when you got to take off, you got to take off. But what this does is, as Brother Tom was saying in the chat of, on Facebook, because we're doing this on Facebook and on Blog Talk Radio, and I should open the chat for Blog Talk Radio. And, and I don't know if we're going to take calls. I'm not sure if the Facebook Live people will hear us. So I'm not going to give the phone number. Um, but why don't you chat here on Facebook or, or Blog Talk? And, and, and Brother Tom is just saying, yeah, this is just a doesn't do anything we need full-time jobs full-time work it's not just sitting in a booth for the CSA it's about being exposed to all kinds of elements and all kinds of uh, pathogens and making sure the people don't get lost when they ride the trains and the buses um, so in the workers contract in article 3.6 we take a hatchet to all of that okay and in fact we 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 even uh we cut we we completely uh uh when it comes to the health insurance we we say there's no more there'll be no more increase in employee contribution premiums or additional deductions for the duration of the agreement and if you're a part-timer and you go into full-time, the contract currently locks you out of your full-time benefits for three months. That ain't fair. What if you've been a part-timer for like eight years? Even if you've just been there a year. After one month, then you get your benefits as full-time, not three. Insurance coverage. Now, this we, we put this in, in the workers' contract, too, where there's this weird thing that, okay, if I work at the CTA and my wife works at the CTA, I got to get health insurance for me, and she's got to get health insurance for her. I can't get family coverage, and then it covers her. Now, if she works somewhere else, or she doesn't work anywhere else, she's a homemaker, then she is okay in that family coverage. So what we say, we, we, we strike through all of that and say employees with the spouse who also work for the authority may include their spouse as a dependent on their family plan. I see your brother Reginald, brother Louie, and Kenny, and uh, brother Noella watching uh, greetings, uh, brothers. Um, and you see, the pandemic has shown that we work. We're the so-called essential. I say so-called because it's not accurate. Because they use that as a as a term to try to lock us in to to to, to giving up our, our our right to strike according to the Illinois Public Labor Relations Act, Section 17. So you when you adopt that word, I'm essential you're actually taking on the language they want you to take so that you become essential and then we can they can slide you in there maybe amend section 17 that, that, that qualifies certain jobs as essential you don't want to be essential in the state of illinois you want to be front line seniority so Part-timers should, should accrue seniority, but we have that in the contract, but we also have with that in the contract that after six months, you're full-time. You got a good record? You're full-time. You go full-time. Now, you, you, you know, you, you come in late to work a lot. You know, you're getting some issues, you know, and you're getting lots of hits on your record. Okay, the CTA will be able to hold you back. After six months, you're going full time. So enjoy your three days off. But we have to put what the what the members want in our contract. We got to make a contract that we want, 
not what the CTA or the mayor will accept. And that's what they tell you. A lot of the union officers will tell you that. They say, we got to make a contract they're going to say, because we asked for this and we asked for that. And they said, no. What is this? Ask for. What do we need a union for if we're asking? They don't say, hey, can I have some coffee? You say, give me that coffee. <laughs> I want coffee now. Well, we can't give it to you. Well, when can you give it to me? I can give it to you tomorrow. No, I need it now. Oh, God. Can I give it to you in an hour? No, I want it now. Okay, can we have, can we give it to you in 30 minutes? No, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I, I'm putting my machine down, my tools down. Um, I'm going to take a break. In fact, all my co we're going to take a break. Okay, 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 here's your coffee, here's your coffee. See? Now, that's a super-duper oversimplified version of what a union is supposed to do. But I am no, no exception. Anybody could learn this, and anyone should know this. And they will tell you, some people will tell you the business unionists and local 308 and local 241 will tell you, well, we're a different kind of union. You can come here with all, all of what them other unions done and all this. But we're different. It's... CTA is different, our unions, ATU, we're all different. No, no, no. No, no, no. Rotten food smells the same no matter where it is. Smoke indicates there's a fire no matter what it is. You don't need to be a veteran of 45 years to know. So some issues that um, we've dealt with in the pandemic, and we got just about eight minutes, eh, about 10 minutes left on the uh, blog talk stream, but on Facebook, I guess we, we could just keep going. I'm not, I'm hoping my connection's working. Um, workers have been organizing throughout the pandemic all over the country. And there's been wildcat strikes. And what a wildcat strike is, is two, there's, there's many different kinds of strikes, actually. So you should know what a wildcat strike is, though. So a wildcat strike is where the workers just get together. They don't, they're like, ah, forget the president of the union, forget the officers. We're going to all get together, and we're going to do this and that. So in Local 26, on a, uh, a couple weeks prior in March in local 26 in Detroit and bus operators struck for a day demanding PPE and what's that word what's that phrase hazard pay do you know what they got it so It was similar, and they refused. The traitors, both of them, Ken Franklin and Keith Hill, traitors. They betrayed us. Absolutely. And they went around, and they said, uh, we are not going to talk about you know, anything about public action, striking, anything like that. Okay. That's what they did. And so they just went around just silencing people. Now, in a couple of days, it's going to be April 8th. On April 8th, 2020, our co-workers at Midway Airport, or at, not Midway Airport, Midway Shop, uh, basically walked out, quite a few of them, because of safety issues regarding the pandemic. And our union... Uh, 
and when you when you talk to the the co-workers you understand and hopefully one day we can do like an interview with them and just get the whole story um now Right now, because of the pandemic and because there's so much desperation out there in society, a lot of our coworkers were on the front lines. I mean, literally on the front lines. You got the, the vehicle operators, train bus. You have the servicers who clean the trains and the bus, especially the trains. Bus servicers are generally, you know, in the garage or out of the public. Uh, but but the train a lot of the, the train too you know they'll be in the shop but we got servicers that are on the platforms and we got janitors in the stations the terminal um, and we got uh, supervisors also on the platforms and these these union workers are being attacked every day people got nothing to lose so they're assault assaulting they're spitting they're threatening. They're, they're hitting every day. And our union presidents refuse to pick it. But see, the workers, we can pick it. We can protest. So we do that. So on 95th Street, we did something. At Howard Street, coming up, look out for it. We plan to do something. So you... When you're off the clock, you have a lot of power. You could take one hour, you take 30 minutes, you could take a couple hours, you could take the whole day. You could organize a protest with your coworkers about these working conditions, about being beat up at work. There's no reason why we should be treated this way. But nothing's going to change if we don't speak up. If you don't organize with your coworkers, our union leaders they just want to meet with. They want to do secret meetings in, uh, with 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 executives and, and politicians, and they're gonna tell us, "Hey, we can't have this anymore." And they'll be like, "Oh, okay," <laughs> and they just go back to work and do what they do. When the public has no idea what we're going through, the public will not support our actions. They will not support us making demands for better working conditions because better working conditions, what? They cost money. And that's what unions do. There's no union management relationship. The, 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 the labor unions and company uh, management are, are polar opposites. I'll break it down to you simply. The job of a corporate executive or or a store even it's just I'm talking about people who control how a company is managed manager manager their purpose is to save costs to, to cut costs save money and boost production and that is often done on the back the workers it is sometimes you know supplies um, things like that but that affects the workers because it was a well, we're gonna we're gonna get cheaper you know tools so the mechanics the repairmen will end up being like, I can't use this thing it breaks it doesn't fit it strips using cheap hardware Cheaper hardware. Oh, now the now the bolts used to be this long. Now they're this long. You know, cutting jobs. So you your our our blog talk live stream is going to end in about a minute, but it's going to keep going for about ten minutes after that. Then the Facebook live stream is going to keep going. So stay with us. So the jobs that you pick in this pick. Maybe they'll cut one or two of them or they'll merge them with other stuff in the next pick. What does that do for you? Nothing. It saves money on their end. But for you, what does it do? It makes you have to work more 
for less. It speeds up your production, speeds up the way you have to do the work. At the Justice Coalition, we are uh, uh, calling for workers, for co-workers to help assemble something in the contract to put in two-person crews, two persons. Every job has to have two people, especially the jobs that are out there in the public. Maybe if you're a parts room clerk or a terminal clerk, I mean, even, the, even that, if you're a terminal clerk, you can get overwhelmed with calls and whatnot but but when it comes to operators of the vehicles maintenance people two is better than one but that costs money right that costs money so the so the live is over at blog talk but it's still recording for another 14 minutes Who operates the motor, controls the motor, drives the train. Then you got someone who deals with the customers in the doors, helps the operator, becomes a apprentice of the operator so that that person can move into that position for more pay. Flag. There's always more than one on the right of way. Repairman doing inspection. There should be two. You have an apprentice and a master or a, someone with some experience. Always, at all times. Because that's where most of the safety violations occur is because you got a new person on the shop floor, in the garage, in the shop, on the train, on the bus, and they just make sometimes deadly mistakes. It could be prevented if there was a partner with other eyes and more experience. In the most tragic circumstances, it won't work. But generally, it's much better that way. It's safer for the workers. But we need the public on our side when we push these things, when we demand these things. So let's see if there's any other uh, comments. Um, Trying to see here. Uh, don't want to miss anybody if they had any questions or anything they wanted to put out. Uh, let's see. Doesn't look like it. So, you know, I started off talking about Easter. And it's Sunday. Sunny out. Nice weather. But there's people that got to work today. And that's part of the job. You got to work. It's a 24 hour operation. We got to serve the people any time of day or night. But why is it that some members get paid for that day double <clears throat> and some don't? This is against, this is absolutely antithetical against our, our union, uh, our bylaws. Okay, our constitution as a union. I'm, I'm gonna. Okay, the preamble. It's kind of long, so I want to just go to a, a, a couple of things. So, we, the Amalgamated Transit Union, promote, uh, establish order and harmony. Order and harmony. So we're going to establish it where? In the cities, in our neighborhoods, on our block? Okay, but it starts at work, where we work. So is it harmonious? Did my, my co-worker who's a CSA or in the Second Chance program or part-time bus operator has no dental insurance it may have an infection in one of their gums that if caught right away will prevent them from having to do more expensive more invasive surgery on their mouth 
see, we don't understand that the part-timers have no dental coverage. So if they were full-time, they would have it. So we can't just say, well, let's make sure the part-timers get dental. No, let's get the part-timers the full-time. Because if you're in the rail side and you want to go full-time, the only way to really do it is going to Second Chance Program and then hope that you can get Second Chance Program. You can go from apprentice, uh, so-called apprentice, servicer or janitor to full-time. Or you come in as a CSA, customer service assistant, and you got to go to flagman, and then after that, that's still part-time. After that, you become, you get train operator certified, and hopefully you get full-time from that. These things could take years. And for some, it's been years. You got some flagmen that been, who are, who are certified train operators also, and they're still part-time. And they're safe. They, 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 you know, they do their job safely. That's not right. You have some flagmen that aren't trained, sir, motor qualified, train qualified, train operator qualified. Hey, still part time <clears throat> for years, and they know their job really well, and they teach a lot of people. They teach all the new flagmen to come on and move on to operator and whatnot, like I did. What, 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 what kind of harmony? How is that harmonious? That we, the union, Local 308, Local 241, sign off. We, we allow our presidents to sign off on these agreements that establish these kind of disharmonious jobs. Then the CSAs end up being pitted against the CSRs because the CSRs are picking what the CSAs can't necessarily pick. But then... Oh, well, maybe they 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 uh, you know the, the 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 pick people who are in the CTA kind of manipulate the pick, and then the CSAs get screwed even more, the part time customer system. So what does that cause? That causes them to fight against each other, to dislike, distrust, work against each other. And when CSAs started, sometimes there were issues where the CSRs were like I ain't helping them out. They're part time, you know. They're going to take our job. Yeah, but you know, you see what that happens. You shouldn't have it. Everyone should be full time. If you want to be part time to stay part time, that's different. But the majority of it, of uh, people, don't want that. They don't. So as I was saying, uh, local uh, two forty one is um, having uh, no union meetings. And in December, uh, the Justice Coalition organized a protest at the local 241 office demanding that President Hill and, at the time, Ken Franklin hold virtual membership meetings. And, of course, they refused. All of this is in the uh, Take Action section of chicagotransitworker.com. Check it out. But we have a new president in Local 308, and and the, I believe the pandemic played a part in him getting in there. And um, uh, he has absolutely trashed union democracy in just a few months. Uh, Eric Dixon is uh, not interested in what you want. He's interested in what he wants to do because he doesn't. He told me this. He he. Apparently, he has no interest in gathering all these diverse opinions and uh, helping us quantify them to come up with democratic solutions to, to what we need to do about major issues, such as the health care trust. He's just deciding what he wants to do. This is very dangerous. This is not a union. It's not a, what a union president is supposed to do. In the preamble, Hi, what are you talking about, Eric? The union, he's the boss. Of the, actually, there is no boss. If there is a boss, it's us, the members. So, and I'm, I'm going to, the preamble's kind of long, so I'm just going to go, we the Amalgamated Transit Union, build up an organization 
where all the working members of our craft can participate in the discussion of those practical problems upon which the solution of which depends our welfare and prosperity. All. A-L-L. Not some. Not the ones that the union president likes. Not the ones that the secretary can tolerate. All. All. This is our union. And what, what President Keith Hill and President Eric Dixon don't seem to understand, and same with Ken Franklin, is that they have a duty to collect information from us about what we want, to quantify it, and carry out what we want. If the majority of us want to go to Springfield and beg politicians to drop the health care trust law or change it, then that's what they got to do. If we want to change it, we want it to zero, we want it 1%, 2%, 2.5%, 1.5%, we have to be surveyed, and then they have to take that information and say, well, that's what I'm going behind. Now, what y'all are willing to do to back up the message that I have to bring as their exclusive bargaining agent? They could, he could even take, the president could even take a couple of us in these meetings, but they don't, they don't like that, because then we'll know what they're really talking about, and that's what they do, they make deals, we got to tell them no more deal making, this is the year 2021, we're the COVID revolution generation, so we have to tell them, no, you're going to do what we want. And so when we go to the union meetings, we can actually direct our presidents to do these types of things. And they'll tell you in 308, and I'm always at the meetings passing motions and they're being shot down, but it's an exercise in union democracy. And sometimes they do get support. So on, on blog talk, we're about wrapping up. I think uh, we've gone long enough with this. Uh, short message so one year now right I really encourage all of you to elect you don't have to suffer for three years under a dictator the union belongs to you But that's okay, because that's what America is. We're all about, I'm just going to pay someone to do something. I'm going to pay my way to happiness. And we do that. It's natural. But we have to sacrifice. And for those of you that are Christians, on this Easter Sunday, we know that our part-time brothers and sisters are not getting that holiday pay. Like the Christ who sacrificed his life to make the world, to make humanity better, to give humanity a chance. We have to do that for our part-time brothers and sisters. We got to sacrifice. We got to stand up for them. We got to Give up some time. We got to give up some fear. We're going to have to deal with being threatened by the manager because we protested for full time jobs. It's been a whole year of this suffering. No one deserves to live in poverty who's a local 308, a local 241 member, putting up GoFundMe pages because they had a fire in the house. It, they can't afford insurance, okay? I hope this message inspired you, inspires you to take initiative and be a leader. One last thing, April 13th is 
an election, an interim election in local 241. Uh, we got two candidates. There's two candidates who I've worked with uh, during the pandemic to try to get justice for our coworkers. Brother Nick Schoolark, brother Miguel Perez. Schoolark is 103rd maintenance steward. Miguel is at Kedzie, transportation steward. This is not an endorsement. I'm just letting you know these two brothers sacrificed personal time to help us fight for each other. So they understand that unionism is more than just elections. Thanks a lot for listening. And um, thanks a lot for uh, supporting the message that I'm giving you. And I hope it inspires you to be the change. Peace.